you mentioned you're going to have a, a lengthy injury report. How is uh, how are you at wide receivers? Well, we'll see how we are today at practice. We'll see who, what they can do, and we'll go from there. We'll put it on an injury report after we see what they can do. What is, is this the top? Go ahead, T. Is this a good? I mean, AJ's injury. Is it a good thing that uh, you know that's a position that you, you're kind of deep in this year? I mean, there's been years past this franchise has not been able to go as deep when one or two guys are maybe on the injury report. Well, I think what we try to do is try to insulate ourselves everywhere for for a lot of things that come up. I mean, player availability um, fluctuates throughout the season, and so hopefully, you know, that everybody that um, shows up for meetings and comes to practice, uh, can can understand that they could potentially have a role in the game. Coach, what about the turnovers? How do you address that, uh, continue to address that and, and get that fixed? Um, you know, I think a lot of fundamentals. You know, I think that it starts with, you know, those, those players that, that have the ball in their hand are, are understanding what um, what their coach should do, uh, how, the, how to protect it. Uh, when we throw it, the, the line... Being able to be firm on the inside, run them by, you know, so that the quarterback can have a clean pocket and there's not guys, you know, reaching for it there. Um, when we throw it, that we we we, th we throw it in, in in the correct spots, you know, where the receiver can make a play on it. And then when we do throw it there, you know, using technique that that would allow for it not to be, you know, tipped up in the air. So we're going to work it, continue to work it today. We've added more emphasis to it today. Uh, Marcus, obviously, Marcus and Brady kind of coming off the designated for the return list. What can they do up to this point where maybe when they do start this process, it's not as long as, you know, as it could yeah, be? Yeah, they, they start to, you know, incorporate themselves back into meetings. Um, you know, last week, you know, I think Frank and Todd and their staffs do a great job of trying to get them in a return to play as they start to, to get to that threshold where, it looks like they're going to start practicing that some of the rehab would mimic uh, some of the practice, you know, the things that we may ask them to do in practice. So I think, you know, whether that's Adrian or Brian Bell, you know, working with Frank and Todd uh, in the rehab process, that that return to play would start to, to happen maybe sooner than, than it would at practice. Is it conceivable that one or both could be ready Sunday? Sure. Corey Davis look uh, look like a guy you remember when you're watching film on the Jets right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's big. You know, I mean, Corey's he's physical. Um, you know, has has made some t contested catches. Has um, tried to play big, and and yeah, I mean, I think that that's you know what we remember Corey being, and it's going to be a difficult challenge for us. He's got a good combination of size and uh, speed, uh, and and he's a willing blocker. Derek, we get this, you get this question every year, but Derek's workload because so much of the offense runs through him. How do you balance that with trying to keep him fresh for the whole season? I think we'll just try to do you know what's best for Derek, what's best for the football team, and, and try to try to do everything we can to win, and then you know recover um, and try to have a plan as we work through the season. On the other other side of that, is it ever difficult? to take him off the field on some third downs with those being as crunch as they are and him being as good as he is? Well, there's always time. You know, I mean, there's places that, you know, we feel like what his skill set is and what his role is. And, you know, there's some third downs that he's out there and there's some third downs that he's not. When, you, um, when, you, when you've watched the Jets so far, what kind of jumps out at you maybe on both sides of the ball? Well, I would imagine, you know, that this will be one of the best, if not the best, uh, defensive fronts that we'll play this year, you know Williams, um, Fatukasi, uh, Rankins, you know, Franklin Myers, Shepard, you know roll them one after another. If you don't block Mosley, uh, he's guaranteed to make the tackle. Young secondary, um, I think their backs are are good and active. You know when they've handed it to them and been able to, to go to the run. You know, obviously, Corey, I mean, they've got, you know, a couple tight ends and then the, you know, rookie quarterback who's ultra talented. Um, so we'll have to be, you know, we'll have to be sharp. We're going to have to clear our minds and, you know, move on to the next opponent. I was saying the other day that, that Nick Westbrook kind of shows you something new each week that he can do. Uh, um, 
you know, what are some things, maybe even just this season, that you've seen kind of gradual development and some new progress? Well, we ask him. You know, he knows a lot of positions. You know, we ask him to know a lot of positions. There's a lot of formations that go into it, and it's, you know, who's the X, who's the Z, who's the F, and you know, that could get, you know, pretty jumbled up based on, hey, man, are you the are you the Z this play? Are you the F? And you know, not only getting lined up, but then you know what what you have on that route. So. It's not quite as easy as it sounds. Uh, Nick's been able to handle that, play multiple positions, play in a kicking game, come up with some big catches in, in opportune uh, times. What are the things maybe that you can pinpoint that uh, has been a cause for the third down defense improvement so far? Same thing it always is, getting a good rush. And if you're playing man coverage, being tight and not getting picked, and if you're playing zone, you know, having good vision and break on the quarterback. and. You know, I think the guys are, you know, excited about doing it. There, there's been some production, so that leads to some confidence, and you know, can it's gonna have to be a lot better. When it comes How big to of a test is this? Uh, this two game. Get in there, John. If you want it, you're gonna have to jump in there, man. Don't want to jump the queen. Yeah. Can't, can't do that. <laughs> with, with playing two back-to-back -back road games, teams that are, you know, still looking for their first win, what's the challenge for your team of staying focused with the task at hand starting Sunday? I don't have to look around too far every week in the National Football League. It's a, it's a difficult task to go on a road to win. Uh, records don't mean anything. Um, that's just the way we approach it. You know, after you win or you after you lose, um, you know, you can't let uh, any sort of complacency set in. You know, we have to resist those temptations to to feel like okay, we've we've, we've won two games in a row. Like that really is not going to mean anything going up to New York. It's going to have to be. You know, prepare, um, you know, and show up every every day to work and, and with an attitude and willingness to to understand who these guys are, how we're going to have to execute the game plan, you know, um, and, and go up there with a lot of focus and, and, and clean up a lot of things. Look at the seven turnovers you guys have had on offense. It seems like there's a lot of different things that have caused them, some interceptions, strip sacks, receivers fumbling. When there might not be a, a sort of one cause for all of them, how do you focus on that and, and, and I guess, get the team's attention in the right place as a coach? Well, we'll have, we showed it to them, we coached it. They'll break up into all those little groups that you talked about and focus on it twice today at practice. Um, linemen taking care of the responsibilities that we talked about, the role that they have in um, ball security, which is about the pocket. Um, you know, so they may not carry it, but Quiz did call, you know, our right tackles you know, are, are, are leading the team and cause fumbles, which probably isn't a good thing. Um, but then the receivers will focus on stuff that they're doing, contested catches, catching strong to the tuck. Um, that then when they turn and they understand guys are coming and trying to rake it out of there, um, catching the ball with the proper technique, not letting it get into our shoulder pads, you know, all those things that we – we do every day, you know. We've done every day since um, April, but we'll do them more today. You, you mentioned after the game on Sunday, on the reverse side of things, you want more turnovers on defense. How do you approach that? Same way we have since April. We'll add another period today, and we'll we'll show it to them, and we'll teach the techniques, and and we'll 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 keep practicing it. I and mean, there's certain things that you can coach, and there's certain things that you can't. You know what I mean? Like I. I'm just, you know, I go back to this. That Bill, Bill, God love him, never told me how to strip sack the quarterback. I, you know, I just, you guys just got to go, and we're reaching for it, and we got to keep going. We're close. Harold's close. Um, Harold's had a couple close ones. And as long as I think that you're seeing the right examples, there's some times that we miss them. We miss those opportunities. So it's like trying to increase opportunities, right? So trying to increase the chances that we're hammering at it and saying, okay, that's a missed opportunity, tracking missed opportunities, showing them those missed opportunities uh, for when, not to say that it would have come out, but at least, man, we're, we're, we're get, getting tickets to the, to the raffle, trying to get as many chances as we possibly can. When it comes to uh, rotation uh, during the games of players, do, do you have an idea of what you want during the week and then kind of turn it over to the position coaches or, or how does that generally work. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that there's an idea of what you want to try to do. You know, if you have a couple guys that, you know, you're looking to do that with at a position or there's something that you're trying to figure out and then, you know, they, they you know, 
there would be a number or a snap count or whatever it may be. You know. Curious about the, the Julio situation in particular. Did, does the position coach just say that's it? He can't he can't do anymore. No, I, I, I'm you know I mean we're not going to address that anymore. But if there's any decision that goes on, it, it's my decision ultimately. So that can always start and end with me. You know that's you know, I know you guys love that answer. So that's the deal. Had a different starting safety three weeks in a row. You feel like Dane is sort of in that spot now for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, I mean, today, you know what I mean? Yeah, he'll be out there, you know what I mean? Dane, Dane did some really nice things. And um, we just have to get Dane to play uh, as comfortable and aggressive as he did uh, on that first third down pressure, um, which he executed well in practice. That's a great example of a guy executing something in practice throughout the week and then getting an opportunity early in the game, going out and doing it. Um, you know, and then there's just a lot of looks back there at safety that, that are new. And uh, some of them he handled well, and some of them we'll need to correct and, and continue to practice this week. Is potentially a, a good opportunity for Josh Reynolds this week, given the uncertainty at the, at the wide receiver position? Yeah, I mean, Josh continues to, to work, and we have a, you know, as somebody pointed out that there's a lot of guys there, and that those decisions sometimes are, or all the time, are always difficult. You know, trying to, you know, figure out where you're going to need guys, who you're going to need, based on special teams and other positions, and so you know, Josh continues to work hard, and um, you know, we'll see where everything is at the end of the week. You mentioned Chester, I guess, a couple of times in his return average against the Colts. You feel like he's close to maybe breaking one, and what's maybe changed there to help you have some success there? Well, we block better. You know, that's always a good place to start. You got to take care of the Gunners. We knew that that was a key. Uh, that'll be a huge key this week with Hardy, you know, a player that's um, an excellent special teams player, excellent gunner, very difficult to even double team. You know, he splits them, he runs around them, runs through them, tries to push guys into the returner, very good at what he does. So, um, you know, that'll be a huge key for us. Always starts with, with blocking those guys if you want to return the football in the, in the punt game, punt return game. You know, guys were working hard. You know, guys were trying to get extra blocks for um, Chet against a good unit, and this is the same thing this week. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. I, I know um, there are different animals, different people involved. Punt return, pretty good. Kick return, you've mentioned several times, yep. you're not satisfied with. Should they, uh, are there enough fundamental things? Uh, not really, not really. We just have to continue to work that. We just have to, um, you know, it's, it's just a different, you know, technique that we'll continue to work. We're doing it today. We normally would do it later in the week. We're going to do it every day because it is critical. Um, you know, front side blocks, back side blocks, um, you know, depth of the kick, you know, how far you have to drop back. You can't hold those blocks forever. Um, the fine line between being aggressive and, you know, getting a penalty, you know, you get a penalty in that return, in that unit, you start on the 10 yard line. So there is all, a lot of things that factor into that. None of them are going to be valuable or valid excuses. It's just that that's you know, a skill that we have to get better at to get back there, um, take care of the front side, and, and, and wall off the guys on the back side. Mike, when you're facing a, I know you like to run your defense, but when there's a rookie quarterback versus maybe a veteran quarterback, do you, you know, do things a little differently, or do you just, again, run your own defense and approach it that way? Well, I mean, there's a game plan each and every week, and you know, we try to execute and you know go into it with something and be willing to change. But um, you know, this is not something that you want to just go ahead and say, "Well, we don't normally do this, but somebody else did, so let's try it because maybe it worked." And you know, you'd like to find things within your system that guys are are comfortable with. There, there's a fine line between just going with some scheme that maybe you saw somewhere else, um, which the guys may not know as well or confidently, and then um, trying to have a few wrinkles. Expecting anyone else to, to enter that 21-day window this week? I don't think so. I don't think so. 